we're going to go ahead and finish closing up this operation. We're going to tighten up all the bolts on the drive shaft. And remember, we're going to snug them down just like torquing a head or something. You don't want to tighten down two bolts in any one pattern. You need to make sure you're distributing the, the tension equally onto the shaft so that way bolts don't loosen up and start to pull apart from the shaft. But um, that kind of brings me to the point I wanted to make. Making these simple upgrades on these cars is not so much a bad idea, but there was three different types of uh, limited slip differentials that were available um, by the mid-70s anyway. And the three different types of limited slip differentials that were out there were 456, which is something all the racers really enjoy to have, and the 410, which is uh, a later series differential, but is more highway friendly. And then there's a unit that not many Americans really know about that was available. It's called the 430, which was a European early 70s model as far as we know. It's uh, pretty hard to get your hands on. Um, effectively, you probably have to make some kind of deal with somebody overseas in order to get one. Um, but it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's got good track day gearing to it. Um, and it's also reasonable on the highway. 410 is a much lower RPM drop on the highway than a 456. So if you're going to change out the limited slip in your car, excuse me, if you're going to change out the differential in your car for a limited slip, you probably need to really consider what it is the application is going to be. If you're going to find yourself doing mostly city driving and cutting some hills in the back road somewhere, you might enjoy a 456. But if you feel like you're going to do mostly high speed driving, i.e. on the highway and things of that nature, you probably should consider a 410. But if you kind of feel that you're somewhere in between, then you really should try to make the effort to get a 430. Um, we find that when we have chases down, they're not that hard to find, but you do tend to pay a premium for them because they're not that abundant. Um, this particular car, I've had this differential sitting around the back for years. In fact, I've had this differential probably close for 10 years now. And this is a 430. This is the first 430 I ever had my hands on. And um, I've never considered selling it because I knew eventually I was going to put it in one of my own cars. Um, so this one's obviously going in this car. Disregard the the gold effect on the on the differential. It's uh, something nobody's ever going to see because the car sits too low in the first place. But the um, reason I did that was because this uh, differential had it blasted and the person who blasted it wasn't savvy enough with the mediums to know that what you blast steel with, you dare not blast aluminum with. So what happened was is what was casting imperfections became greatly exaggerated. So now it kind of has a real rough sand cast look to it like magnesium does. Uh, for the, the GTA Magnesium wheels, which by the way we will talk about because I have a set down here. Um, so with that in hand, I kind of just ran with it um, and decided to go ahead and just put a light coat of gold on it simply because I had a lot of it. And um, clear coated it with a special motorcycle engine block clear coat. The um, reason I use that is because it's not glossy and also it has uh, higher durability than your regular clear coat that you would paint on top of the vehicle. If you find yourself getting one of these differentials and you put it in, you think that it's a little louder than you think it should be, odds are there is most likely um, corrosion on the ring and pinion gear. And that corrosion typically comes from if a differential can sit around long enough, um, moisture builds up on top, the oil sits somewhere about this high, I'll go this way. The oil sits about this high, so moisture tends to collect on top condensation, and that condensation um, tends to cling to the ring and the pinion gear. So at, over time, that rust will etch itself into the ring and the pinion. So when you're going down the road, the howling sound you hear is, is a less than desirable contact between the ring and the pinion. Um, there's really no good fix for that. Uh, it's really time for a new ring and pinion at that point. This is not a job that you can do at home. This isn't even a job that can be done by your favorite alpha mechanic. 
Um, this is really something that should be done by a specialist who has all the tooling because the end play on the gear between the ring and the pinion has to be set exactly right, which means very special shims need to be used. Those shims are somewhat hard to come by. So if you feel like you're going to end up changing out the ring and pinion, don't try to do it yourself. It seems fairly simple, but you create yourself a lot of trouble and you could destroy what tends to be a fairly expensive part. So, um, ring opinions, anything that has to do with the internals of this, I mean, by all means, changing out the limb slips not that hard of a job, um, but it's not a job for a novice. The ring opinion is completely different. Um, if those units need to come out, then you definitely want to send that out to somebody who does this for a living. Um, in fact, to give you an idea, uh, we're on the far west side of Washington State, and the person that we trust the most to do ours is on the far east side of the state, so we ship these out to Spokane to have them done. Um, we, uh, we tend to change out for very trick limited slip uh, packages from Alcoholics makes a, a lovely uh, limited slip um, unit, and when we find that we're putting those in, we tend to use either a new ring and pinion at that point in time, or we're changing it for a specific reason, but either way, we send the short arm and the unit itself out to Spokane and have it all done by people who can measure and properly set the shims for the, the ring and pinion. And by all means, if you ever have to go inside one of these, you might as well go ahead and change the bearings. Um, they're not that expensive and it's going to save you a lot of grief in the long run. You know, something that's overlooked a lot when people restore their cars or they have transmission engine overhauls is they overlook the drive shaft. These drive shafts should be balanced whenever the opportunity allows itself. Um, this particular unit isn't balanced yet. This car is not ready for the road, but um, before I put this car full time back on the road again, it will have a balanced drive shaft. Um, there is a a certain level of familiarity you become with your car. Um, sometimes you don't even notice that there's an odd vibration. And more times than not, that vibration is coming from the drive line. Assuming that the suspension and everything else is appropriately done. Um, drive shaft balancing, it's not a cheap adventure. Um, I've certainly seen it go anywhere from three, four hundred bucks up to six, seven, eight hundred dollars to be balanced. Um, reason it's so expensive because it is really labor intensive, especially for a uh, articulated drive shaft like Alfa Romeos have. Um, now, we have seen and have explored the concept behind the single piece drive shafts. Um, there's carbon fiber ones out there. There's aluminum ones out there, and you know, the nice thing about that is if you reduce the rotating mass weight of the vehicle, you uh, are effectively putting horsepower back to the wheel again. Um, the articulated drive shaft stills horsepower. A heavy articulated drive shaft stills even more horsepower. So the drawback to a single piece drive shaft though is, is that rear end has very limited travel that you can get away with on compression. Obviously on the drop it's infinite, but on compression it's fairly limited how far up the vehicle can go because you are limited by the uh, drive shaft hump where the rear seat would be. And if one had a carbon fiber drive shaft and it hits that hard enough, it will shatter it. An aluminum one, if it hits it hard enough, will come out of uh, balance and you'll have a wicked vibration. Um, I'm not saying one should be opposed to doing it. All I'm saying is recognize there is a limitation uh, to the functionality. Okay, so I'm going to start snugging up the, uh, the connection at the trailing arm differential. This is a 24 millimeter socket at this point. Um, I have a wide variety of impact tools. They're all based off of their foot-pounds of pressure capabilities. Um, this one has a variable adjustment to it. So here we go. Okay, 
so the trunnion bolt has been torqued down. I'm about to carter pin that now. The bolts at the trailing arms have been torqued down quite substantially. I have an equal amount of torque on the drive shaft on those bolts there. It's 13 millimeters. Obviously, I have a fair amount of work still left in front of me. I still need to connect the emergency brake setup. I need to run new brake lines out to the Brilliant Alcoholics rear brakes. Over this expanding series, we're going to be doing the front brakes. We'll be doing adjustable A arms. We will be doing the Alfa Romeo. Excuse me. We will be doing the Alcoholics Geo Kit. Um, that is a phenomenal thing for you guys that are out there that do track day events. You have no idea how much that will improve the drivability of your vehicle. Um, there's many things we're going to cover on just setting up basics with your car for improved touring, if you will. Um, we will also show you tons of other items that are out there now, uh, like the remote shifters and uh, light and pulley kits, uh, serpentine pulley kits more importantly. Uh, we will talk about the various uh, designs and exhausts. We're going to show you that there's a great deal of debate about what exhaust is ideal for a 105-115 force. Okay, right now I'd like to talk about um, wheel selections and uh, things to consider about them. On the left, this gold wheel, this is an actual original GTA magnesium wheel. It's a 14.7 um, configuration, 14 inch by 7 inch wide. And it is on a Goodyear polyglass uh, tire, which is in reproduction by Goodyear, and it does come out of Canton, Ohio, and it is full rubber. It's not a synthetic like a lot of the tires are today. Um, what is nice is a lot of the tires coming out of production nowadays are actually starting to come out of the states again. Um, for a long time, most of the tires we were seeing were either coming out of uh, Europe, Japan, and China. Um, some of them were a synthetic blend tire, and though they would last forever, they had pathetic grip. Okay, so um, when you're in the market for tires, be sure to be uh, conscientious where the tire is made. Not to suggest the tire made anywhere other than here is not good because a lot of them are, but confirm with the sales staff of that tire outfit that it is actual rubber. Um, you will be so much happier with that in the long run. The wear is uh, sometimes less than a synthetic, but the overall driving experience is definitely better. Now, this wheel on the right, depending on how you're looking at this, this wheel is an Alcoholics 15 by 7 wheel. Um, as you can see, proportionally, though this is a smaller rim, the tire is significantly taller, so therefore it looks like it's bigger than this. But in reality, this rim, this 15 7, is bigger. Something to consider. If you're going to put new wheels on your car, and you want something that looks period, well, you can't really go wrong with these um, 15 inch GTA wheels. The reason is, is there is a greater selection of tires out there in the 15 inch configuration than there is 14 inch configuration. A 14 inch tire, you tend to pay more only because the production level is somewhat less. Now this wheel actually belongs to my car, the green car. Um, and I've had these for a while, but the thing with it is, is I just recently put the tires on. Um, these tires are not cheap. This tire, just because I was looking for a very period looking wheel and tire combination, this tire is about 240 bucks, more or less, each. Whereas on this one, we have the Falcon and the um, uh, I do believe that the, the, uh, the wheel is no longer, the tires are no longer in production. And this tire is really quite sweet for a couple of reasons. One, it has a good amount of grip and it treads water. We live in the Northwest. I don't know if you can hear right now, but it's raining cats and dogs out there right now. I would feel quite confident behind the wheel with this tire on there. I want to show you what I'm talking about. It's got a good track configuration, so if you're out there doing a track day event, you're going to get good grip from these. Once you get heat in them, um, that is the key statement. Make sure they're good and hot before you start pushing the boundaries of your car because they don't act too good when they're cold. Anyway, 
but because of the large gapping and the large exit veins, this tire treads water very well. So for a modern component tire, good rubber, fairly cheap, this isn't a bad way to go. But the point is, at the 15 inch level, you have lots of lots of options. 14 inch level, you have very few options. And of those, in the performance capacity, you have even fewer. Most wheels that are 14 inch tend to be a uh, very consumer quality tire. Um, so you get a lot of uh, get a lot of miles out of them, but you don't get a lot of grip. Okay, so something to consider. If you're, again, going to end up putting new wheels on your car, think about these 15 inch over a 14 simply because of your availability of rubber. Um, the Alcoholics 15 inch wheel doesn't come this color. This is part of a five wheel set that's here for a car that we're currently building. Um, and the customer wanted the wheels to be somewhat of a matte finish and darker as well. So this is a matte gunmetal finish. Okay.